Hey guys, Doug here from Motion. It's crazy this day and age how fast these cars are going and more and more cars are needing parachutes, which means there's new people who are new to parachutes in general. So I have a lot of requests for how to pack your parachute videos and some pointers and tips. So here we are today with our 2018 Blue Mule Camaro. Uh, this is a twin turbo uh, LT motor and pretty comfortable to kind of street car, race car type of stuff that we sell and uh, deal with on a daily basis. So I'm going to show you how I pack a Stroud parachute. Stroud is a brand of parachute that we carry in motion. It's made in the USA. They're constantly improving their formula, if you will. Their fabric keeps getting better. The chutes last longer. Uh, the people that make them in Oklahoma are just great people. They're great to deal with and their price is great. And I'll show you a couple of the reasons why we like Stroud so much because it does have some competitive advantages and they're always on top of their game. Okay, so chute's been pulled on the car. Before we get into actually how to pack it, we'll talk about a couple maintenance items uh, on your Stroud parachute. So there's a few pieces that go along with this parachute. You have your main bag that stays on the actual uh, car itself. You have your main parachute uh, here. Uh, you have your D bag. I didn't stutter. That's what it's called. Uh, also known as a tan bag if you call in and you're needing some uh, replacement parts. This is the easy way, easiest way to describe to us. That one's black, this one's tan. You can call it whatever person's name you don't like. That's fine too. Uh, this is called your spring pilot. So the parachute that we have on the Blue Mule is a spring pilot parachute. So what it is, is it's an actual spring. Uh, when you pull the cable, the spring deploys, and this is actually a mini parachute in itself. So this is going to catch wind and pull the rest of the chute out of the main bag. On other cars, you'll see air launchers. They won't have this part. The air launcher is actually going to rocket it out on its own. Same with a spring canister launcher. They have the big silver canisters. I have another video. Uh, I'll put it in the description below that kind of talks about the differences between the spring canister, the spring pilot, and the air launcher. This item and this item uh, will wear out on a fairly regular basis. Not super often, but it's just a wear item. So, you know, from race to race, uh, you need to have somebody that checks this. If it's not yourself, it's the person that's uh, packing your parachute. This thing, if you drag it all the way down the return road, all the way home, uh, it's going to wear out fast. And you need this to function properly for it to catch air to pull the main chute out. So, check the condition of this. If you drag this thing all over eternity and back, of course, it's going to wear out fast. Um, we sell these, we keep them in stock. It's always a good thing to keep in mind and look at to replace. This item will eventually get drug through and everything as well. Um, not quite as crucial to be perfect as this thing is, but it will wear through and then it's just going to make packing it a little bit more difficult. So keep an eye on these two things. Um, if, if anything needs to be replaced, replace them between races by all means. Stroud is pretty cool. They keep developing better fabric to use. Stroud just released this new material last year and it lasts a substantially lot longer than their previous material and are kind of setting the bar for everybody else as far as shoot life because you're also going to drag this down the return road after the car goes down and this uh, just deflates and drags on the ground. So. Um, that's another reason why I like the Stroud parachute. But now that you know all the different pieces, I'm going to kind of show you how to pack this thing. A lot of people are really nervous or hesitant to ever pull their chute because they think packing it's so difficult. And it is the first time and the second time, but pretty quickly it gets to be second nature and it's really easy. Way easier on your brakes. It makes stopping the car a lot safer because you're always going to have it behind you. If the car gets out of shape, this is going to pull you straight keep the car in shape and uh, get you to a stop on a regular basis. Another thing I'll note, I made a couple posts about this on social media recently. If you have a shoot, use it regularly because what happens is if this thing stays packed in that car and it gets rained on, sun, cold, hot, it eventually just kind of takes form of how it's folded in there. So the first time you need it, it's so wrinkled up and so creased that it's not going to deploy properly. And of course, that's going to be the time you actually need it. So get in the habit of using it. It's always safer to use a parachute, especially some of these short eighth mile tracks that you see nowadays, especially on no prep 
and everything else in between. These cars are fast, just use a parachute. It's a good uh, safety net, if you will. So this is kind of how you get your parachute. Half of the battle of a parachute is how you pick it up after it is deployed. Uh, me personally, I get out of the car, I fold it up a certain way and toss it in the passenger door. Uh, that way, every time I pull it back out to actually pack it, it's that much easier. If you just let whatever random dude who's drinking your beer that night grab your parachute, he's going to pick it up, put it in a jumbled mess, and it's going to make life so difficult. So, I always try to take it, um, I just grab these in one hand, and then you just try, kind of work backwards and just fold it in half. That way you don't get your cords uh, wrapped up and just kind of fold it like that. That way when you come back out, you can just lay it back out accordingly. If you get this in front of the chute and all that and the chute inside out, it gets to be a real pain in the butt. So um, this is pretty much about how a parachute's going to look when you're done with it, if you pack it up properly. Now this car uses a 430 chute. It's heavy, like a lot of these um, door cars are. But these chutes are all built the same, they're just smaller. So um, if you have questions on sizing a parachute properly, I have a chart down below. It'll show you at what weight mile an hour, what chute you should be using. Anything over 200 mile an hour gets dual chutes, and they are different than the single chutes in size. So um, if you have any questions, give us a call. We're always happy to help. So one of the main problems, if somebody does grab your parachute incorrectly, whether it's you or your uh, teammate, is a lot of times these cords get all flip-flopped and the easiest way to straighten the panels out is to straighten the cord. So what I do is I grab up here at the beginning, there's a little yellow stripe. I think they're different colors uh, depending on when they were made. But I will just grab, pinch it right here. They all come out flat and just work your way backwards on the car. And so what that's going to do is if, if any of them are backwards, it's going to flip-flop them and straighten them out. And what happens is as you get back towards the end of the car, it'll be a telltale which one needs to go which direction. So it'll kind of allow you to know, you know, which, which way things need to get flopped. At the end, they should all be flat like this. So that's going to mean that every, your, your panels are all aligned and uh, everything's kind of in order so now you can easily pack it. So we've came outside now because it's easier if you pull this thing tight it's just way easier to pack it. Uh, I know you don't always have the ability to do that but uh, it definitely makes it easier to pull it tight at least in my mind. So the next thing is how do you grab the chute because you have a big pile of chute here at the end. So what I do is now that we got those straight I just take you know three panels the parachute is actually shaped like a triangle if you will um, so there's gonna be three creases in it so what I do is I take my finger and I stick it in the first uh, crease here then I will take and grab the second one and so now we have a big triangle and so I'll find my third crease and put it in my third so if you'll see you have a nice triangular shaped uh, package here now so all you're gonna do at this point is lay this down on the ground and you're gonna have a little bit of straightening out to do once you get it there but what I do now is I take this triangle and I fold it over the more consistent it can all be the better it's gonna package up because basically in the end you end up having about 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag so we fold it once and now I'll fold it again So now we have everything packaged, everything's aligned, uh, it's not going to get tangled. We know that the parachute is going to uh, be aligned properly because if you have a panel inside out, when it goes to deploy, it's going to have a, you know, a broken wing, if you will. It's going to look like a bird trying to fly that has never flown before. So now that we have all of that, I'll pull that to the side and all I do is I kind of give myself some slack and we're gonna basically fold it into sections that would basically be about that size of that square because we're gonna to toss it in there next. So um, you'll get the hang of this part pretty good and later on. Uh, it's not always readily apparent, but I just, you fold it like this, then you fold it from underneath 
because basically when it comes out, you want it to unfold as easily as possible. So if it's kind of folded up like an accordion, it's just gonna stretch right out real easily. So we're gonna do one more. Your pilot cord is gonna be right there on top. So you'll get your own technique to this, but you wanna make sure it's as crisp, uh, nicely folded and in order as you can possibly make it. Like I said, you'll mess this up a number of times before you ever feel like you get a, the hang of it, if you will. Uh, because basically, when you go to do this, you never fold the actual parachute as perfectly as you think you folded it in terms of size. But what I do is I just kind of work my way around the outside. And you can, your knee is like your third hand in, this, in these situations. Said you want to kind of make sure that it's still folded in the same order and in the same fashion so you'll see that it went in there it wasn't i didn't make it look tv easy uh, but now you have everything in order it's still folded properly and it's in the bag so you'll see that the bag has enough room for all the uh, straps one thing i'll note is well, i see a lot of people buy used parachutes and a lot of times what guys will do is they'll cobble together a bunch of parts they and their buddies have laying around and they'll sell it on online. Uh, a lot of times these shoots, will, these packs will be too small because there is a small and a large. The pilot will be who knows what brand and things are just a pain. So I'm not telling you to not save money but be careful because then if that's too small things just don't fit and it doesn't work properly and it's always just a pain. So we got our cords all straight. We got this pack, we got our pilot chute. So we're gonna make our way towards the car. Just makes it a little bit easier as you go. And the reason I do this is so you don't have to keep getting up and starting and stopping. So everything is packaged. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the cords and I'm gonna fold them very nice and neatly, one on top of another, the whole length of the bag, the whole way across. So. Like I said before, you want to make sure the cords are straight and aligned. Um, they're never going to stay perfect at this point, but if you keep them grouped and fold them nicely, they're not going to have an issue. So fold it in half and you just keep going until you run out of cord. Just work your way all the way to one side of the bag, then all the way back to the next side of the bag. Basically what that does is it just makes a layer that way it's less likely to get uh, tangled up inside of there. Because the last thing you want are the cords getting tangled and frayed in the knot inside the bag. So what I'll do is I'll just keep scooting until I get to my main, um, my main cord. So this is a protector, it protects against uh, wear, it protects against the sun rays. The new uh, Stroud parachutes have this black cord. The older ones have the tan. The black cord is actually what denotes that they're using the new material now. So if you have a tan cord, you have an older chute. Doesn't mean it's bad that they just changed it up. And I think the black looks better anyway. So um, we're at the end of this. So this part is kind of all preference and it depends on what car you have uh, based on how far your mounting point is from here. So every car is going to be a little bit different, but you don't want this to drag on the ground. You don't want it to be anywhere where it can get caught, and there's no real reason to have too much slack on it. So I'll actually fold a little bit of this up on the blue mule here, and you can kind of just check it out by doing that. So maybe just a little bit more. And so now all you do is you put this flap over the top of the parachute. So. Uh, we're basically at the point now where we can start putting it actually inside of the main pack. So the main pack is a black one like, the, like I talked about. Um, one thing that you need to remember is when you get your parachute, it's going to have this little white string on it. Don't throw that away. All I do is I take this, I loop it like that, I loop it around the back of the parachute and put it on there. It can ride down the drag strip with you and you're going to need it again. Packing the chute without this is a huge pain. 
Uh, I'll also put a link in the description for a three pack of these. Uh, if you lose one, it's always nice to have a backup because it's actually hard to find a string when you're in a drag strip that you can use for this. So um, the next part we're going to do is we're going to take this pack and we are going to put it in the main pack. So it's going to be flat down and you're just going to kind of work on getting everything oriented here. So this side, this, uh, if you don't have enough tension or slack hanging out, you can start pulling it out a little bit now. Just be careful that you don't pull it all the way out and you're going to be mad at yourself. So basically everything is in there and seated. At this point, you want to take your string that I had earlier, which should be hanging off back here, and put it through the little pre-made loop that's on the top uh, fold of the parachute. Half and half, just like that. And so this is probably the part that people struggle with the most, or second most, is putting the spring inside of here because uh, it takes a little bit of technique. Once you get it down, it becomes pretty easy. I will note that this is the main reason why I love strap parachutes because they have this bag. So if you had a different brand parachute right at this point, you would not have that bag. You would have folded that up and you would have put it in here and now you'd be trying to put a spring in here. And I don't know if you've ever felt the parachute material before, but it's really slippery. As soon as you start pushing on that spring, it shoots off every direction. By the end of it, you're so mad, you just gotta go grab a beer, sit down in your lawn chair, and think about how you wanna take up playing golf or tennis, because it just makes you hate race cars. So that's why I like strap shoots. So you got a little bit of cord, all you're gonna do is fold that in half a couple times. You're gonna stack it on top of the chute itself. So I always, like I said before, I use my knee as like a third hand. Um, it always comes in handy. Once you get the hang of it, maybe the first time or two, you should maybe bring a friend along uh, to help you pack it. But once you get the hang of what you're actually trying to accomplish, it's not hard to do by yourself, even with this. The one thing I will say is that the air launcher and the spring canister are 10x easier to package because basically you're able to wind the spring up, put it in, uh, you know, basically tie it closed and you're done. And the air launcher, you just hit a button, it releases the pressure, you pack it, rearm the air launcher and you're good to go. So you avoid this whole step. But this uh, spring pilot style is about half the cost. And for your average guy, uh, it keeps the parachute tucked up tighter, which is nice for a street car or a race car. And it also, uh, just as one less thing you have to worry about because all you really need to pack it is this, this uh, string. So, at this point we're going to push this spring in. And if you don't have the main string out in this top panel before you start, this is where you're going to cuss at yourself. So now that I've got that spring compressed in there, you want to kind of push on it as squarely as possible. You're going to feed your string through that bottom eyelet in the actual pack and pull it tight and you'll see that the little eyelet is basically pulled through the first one through the second one. So your next one is going to be whatever side your cable's not on is going to be your next uh, panel to go. So you feed that through there, put a hand on here, hold it tight while you pull it through. Sometimes you got to just kind of jiggle it back and forth. And you have your last, and you have your third panel in. At this point, you'll want to just tuck these little corners in because it makes you look dorky if they hang out. So you get your last panel. Uh, another note, make sure either you have a friend by that can reset your handle or you reset it ahead of time because at this point, you have a parachute packed and you have no way to put your cable into there. So you're going to basically be done and you're going to look at yourself and realize that you screwed up. And you're going to have to let it go and start over. So the last one, here, put your strings through. Push on the middle, and pull it through again. And again, jiggle it a little bit. And you'll see that that little eyelet loop is sticking out. So that's perfect. 
And then all you're gonna do at this point is feed your cable straight through. It's done. So at this point, if you're going home, I suggest you put your remove before flight tag in. If you're going up for another pass, just grab that string, pull it out, you're done. Don't forget the most important step. Wrap this around your upright or the down below part. Leave it on there because next time you'll need it. There's not a bunch of Hollywood editing and uh, special effects in this video. It is doable with one person. I suggest you guys pull your parachute. It's a good safety mechanism. It's a good way to stop. It's a good way to practice. And you start to train yourself because the time that you actually need it when your brakes go out, you have a short shutdown, something goes wrong, your chute will already be out if you have uh, always kind of trained yourself to do so. So if you have any questions, always give us a holler. I hope there's uh, a lot of good info in this. Down below in the description, we'll have all kinds of cool links. And uh, as always, be safe, have fun, and go fast.